Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow top fox and ace Robert Bucknell testing out some cost effective night vision equipment from Scott Country. Plus Wes Stanton kicks off his new series of shotgun reviews. The Foxing Dream Team of Robert Bucknell and Nigel Fulton is back and they've got a new toy, the Yukon Photon Night Vision Unit. Yes, we've been quite impressed by them and when we were at the shooting show the other day, Scott Country were doing a deal for the show and we just thought this is too good to miss because A, they've got them there and they're rather a job to source at the moment and B, they were doing a show price. So uh, we've ended up with one each and I haven't christened mine yet but I've played around with it a fair bit and compared to the old kit I've used in the past, considering the money, I'm very impressed. Three or four rounds to sight it in, I bore sighted it, it was inch, inch and a half away from the bull, moved it and that's it, the next two shots, mm. two foxes, very pleased with it. Well, rained hard this morning and cleared out. It's been a really sunny day, hasn't it? Mm. Nice and clear this evening. Very hot this afternoon. Strong west wind, so we thought that'd be quite good to run round here. And chance to use the night vision. It's fairly late in the year, the foxing calendar. And most of the foxes left now are fairly wary. There are not some easy ones left by the end of February. So we ran out on the old airfield and saw a set of eyes um, hiding under a bush or a spinny. We tried to call it but... Um, well the camera probably has a better, better view but I was watching through this new little night vision and I saw the eyes move. They moved to the left very fast and covered the hundred yards of the trees that was left till it got to the end and it sat there it may have come out um, of the tree line very slightly but thereafter it disappeared and that's all we saw of it really mm. it certainly reacted to the call mm. but it wasn't coming out beyond the trees and it hadn't had a lamp on it other than the initial spot of it. The trouble is you think, well, it's definitely a fox because it reacted, but mm. it could easily be a deer with a youngster and muntjac coming out to try and slay you for interfering with its youngster. Swung down the other way, didn't we? Went round the back, saw absolutely nothing that half. We must have covered two, three hundred acres. And then swung round back to the village and you spotted something right next door to a little bungalow. Yes, a mm. fox. Quite close we to the We pulled road. back the other side. We'd hardly, in fact, got the lights off so I couldn't see anything. Pulled to a halt. And before it hardly stopped, there was a bag. I was thinking, I hope it wasn't the pet cat. Mm. And there was clearly a fox in that night vision several times over but um, people make you worry a bit when they suggest it was something else <laughs> no matter what, what it matters. When my heart rate had dropped down from 180 back to somewhere near normal um, you went and picked up? Yeah I squelched my way towards it picked it up and brought this a good little vixen, vixen back. Mm. It was in a spot where they've got ducks, chickens all sorts of livestock there. Uh, pretty good idea. It's um, lining something up or peering through the hedge. Yeah. 
And it was an old vixen, I think. But, uh, and it wasn't too uncomfortable with us, although we didn't bathe it in light. It, um, you know, it never saw a lamp other than when we were going along the road. Mm. It could have been car lights, but... Uh, it was only 60 yards away, and it's one of that sort of distance. Yeah. You put a drop, drop a lamp on one of those, and yeah. especially one with the old yellow teeth, you've got a fair mm. idea that's going to be... Shift they didn't it. get old yellow teeth by um, drinking milk. Yeah. Only the last six months, that's uh, had a lot of meat down its throat over the years. I reckon that other one up the top might come if we went back later. It was after that thing on the road, wasn't it? So if I have a pee on the side of the road, is that going on camera? Almost certainly, yeah. Well, that was one fairly swiftly in the bag. And then... Who swung... Where did we go? Only about 400 yards down the road, wasn't it? Went around the corner and there was a... A fox, well, fox, you identified two deer across the other side, feeding on the... Yeah, I could see them clearly out in that ditch line, but um, just on the edge of the buildings there was a little glint by a bush, just one, and it was you know, the right sort of height, quick look, could well have been a fox, so we finished looking in that field on the other side of the road, and then turned around and went back and drove through the buildings. It's beginning to look like the photon won't be called into action again tonight, but the boys are about to get a surprise. You could see, well, I couldn't see anything. All I saw was your reaction, the light flick up and go out, and immediately I knew that you'd seen something, pulled to a halt. Straight on it with the night vision, it looked like it was about to cross a ditch on a way. Um, stood there long enough to get a completely clear outline, check what it was, and shot. It turned out when we went to pick it up, it was lying more on the track than I thought, with the water lying around there and the reflections. I was more concentrating on the outline of the fox, and again, that was just that little bit further away, again, for this uh, night vision. It's the first night we've used it. Bit more weight um, the other one, I think. Yeah, pleasing, and we walked to pick it up. More yeah. and we checked how far it was. You made it 113, I made it 114, is that right? Or was it the other way round? Mm. Then we went round, picked that one up, cleared off out the way, and then we saw... One more that came out the hedge and the wind was wrong. Called that in and Into the wood. that wind was, I think the, the spinny we were next, although the wind should have been going, that spinny would have drawn the air down there because it started coming in really well and then it just stood and looked yeah. at us. Yeah. And it went away from the wind. I think when it stood and looked, we were all agreed because we, we talked about how far it was away. We think it's 200 or a little bit over 200 yards away. And I could just pick out in that scope the front of it, a nice white bib. And if I'd had a couple of seconds more, although it's 200 yards away, I could probably have taken a, a shot on that. But we knew it. it was definitely a fox. It was looking on. You can see it's a fox, but getting the outline and the, where you actually want to place the bullet, where the real target is within that fox, took a little bit more adjustment. Mm. We're only five power, so it's not bad. No. And then we pulled up a bit further down the road, all of, what, half a mile down the road, turned around, and there was another fox, again, moved downwind, and mm. that was the end of that. Whether it was the same one or not, I don't know. It, it moved no a little bit. Where way. I was seated, I couldn't really see anything down the back there. It was tucked in over the top of a hedge. Mm. But again, one of the problems we have is that the foxes we saw tonight bar two were ones that were well over on the neighbours and uh, although we got permission there the problem is you're sort of trying to pick things up at arm's length rather than being able to in the middle of your territory be able to get round them and work round them and pick them up fairly easily get right for the wind and, and do something about it we were just not, working wrong there yeah, not quite so keen to come to a call tonight Stop and look at you. James putting him off with that. 
<laughs> so, <I are. laughs> yeah. Certainly with the first one, I was just using the IR for the camera, but because if I used the Nightmaster IR with James's camera, there was, it was just too bright. Even if I set the brightness on that to really low. The second time, I think I had a, well use of both because James's camera is on behind me. But that's very, Decent. very good for you know, 400 pounds for a night vision and everything's on it. With the, obviously with the exception of the Nightmaster you add on, but it's got its own illuminator that comes with it anyway, which is not bad at all. Mm -hmm. So, good evening out. And uh, <clears throat> good first outing for your little piece of kit there. That's worked well. Robert there making good use of the Yukon Furton, and now the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, with the CLA Game Fair less than 17 weeks away. Shooting organisations have been told to work out a plan to mitigate the effects of lead shot as soon as possible. At the latest meeting of the Lead Ammunition Group, members admitted that lead shot exposure could be dangerous to wildlife, but the group said there isn't enough evidence that there is a risk to populations as a whole. The group has now agreed that Countryside Alliance Chairman Barney White Spunner will lead a mitigation subgroup. Busk has promised a great day out at the Gamekeepers Fair on the 12th and 13th of April. Visitors will be able to shop at more than 200 trade stands, as well as visiting the main arena and a food village. There's also a clay line, a kids zone and a new display of bushcraft activities. Visit basque.org.uk for more information. Commonwealth Games organisers have said the shooting events at Barry Budden are set to be truly mesmerising. Event organisers Peter Underhill and Rachel Spry said the range, which has undergone major redevelopment, will be a world-class standard venue by the time it is finished. There will be television sets above every shooting lane, so spectators can see exactly how every athlete performs. Shooters have been urged to make sure their voice is heard ahead of the European elections in May. Basque has called on all its members to lobby their candidates, and it's setting up a dedicated contact website allowing people to give their views. Using the new site, shooters can check their candidates' views on shooting and email them direct. Basque's Christopher Graffius said the site's aim was to ensure that all political parties support the shooting sports. And finally, the UK's clay shooting greats assembled for the Clay Shooters of the Year Awards on Friday. The annual awards celebrate the shooters that have performed exceptionally well over the last 12 months, selected by Clay Shooting Magazine's expert panel. Collecting the awards this year were Ian Peel, Amber Hill, Ed Ling, George Digweed and the GB Ladies Skeet Team. That was the Shooting Show News. Hi there, I'm Wes Stanton and today I'm at Honesbury Shooting School testing the Lincoln Premier Gold. Oh. It's uh, very much at the budget end. Now, before you start thinking that budget indicates poor quality or anything other than value for money, it might be an idea to look at the specifics of what you get for your money on this gun. You might be surprised at just how much gun you can get for your money. Now this gun's clearly designed to be a game gun. It's 28 inch barrels, which means it's gonna be fast handling. It has a narrow diamond cut uh, rib, unlike some of the monstrosities you get on uh, clay guns that look like the M1 motorway. Um, it's relatively light, uh, even for a 28 inch gun. This is only about six pounds, uh, 11 ounces. And although it is potentially chambered for three inch cartridges, personally, I wouldn't want to shoot three inch cartridges through this. Having said that, I've been shooting some Ely Olympic Blues uh, this morning, which is, a, which is a good clay load, and it's been absorbing recoil quite nicely. So apart from the top rib and the uh, 28 inch barrels, what else can we see about this that makes it uh, clear that it's a game gun? Well, it has a Schnabel type forend, which uh, tend to be common on game guns or sporters. It uh, has nice lines. It has a gold inlay on the uh, side of the action on both sides, a duck on one side and a pheasant on the other. Um, the other things is it has a uh, semi pistol grip and a uh, hard butt plate. So all of those things conspire to say this is definitely a gun for going rough shooting or game shooting with. This gun retails for around £850. So while it's firmly in the budget category, you do actually get 
what I call mid-range characteristics for, for your money. This is a multi-choke. If you go back 20 years, you certainly wouldn't have got a multi-choke for, for this kind of price. Um, they're flush fitting, so you can't see that they're in the gun. Um, the fashion nowadays with clay guns is to show off to everybody that you've got some kind of multi-choke. But personally, I prefer those that are hidden away discreetly. Now in terms of the construction of this, it's clearly made on a monoblock. You can tell by this telltale bit of engraving over whether the monoblock joins onto the barrel tubes, which is what you'd expect from a mass production gun. Um, the barrels themselves are um, chrome lined internally, which uh, if you look over the last 10 years or so, they've tended to be on more expensive guns, but as technology improves, manufacturers of, of uh, more inexpensive guns are also turning to that technology to give them uh, a longer life and also Im improve the patterns they throw. The barrels are uh, nicely black. They have a particularly lustrous coal-like quality. Um, I guess if there's any saving to be made in the production, the finishing is clearly uh, done by machine, certainly on the on the um, checkering on the wood. I have actually seen far worse than this. This is uh, perfectly serviceable. And the uh, engraving itself on the action. If I were a snob, I would say that it's uh, cheap and cheerful, but I'm not a snob. And I'm gonna say that if it's in your cabinet, it's gonna look pretty good. If you want a gun for under a thousand pounds with a three year warranty, I think you can do far worse than one of these. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.